It's spooky season, y'all. And you know what that means? Time to rant. Oh, hey, fancy seeing you here. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Naomi, your host, and this is Mindful Movement. Where we talk about psychology, fitness, nutrition, and how all of those things are kind of the same thing, but not at all, or rather how they're connected. So let's get to it. It's spooky season, y'all. And that means there's pumpkins and ghosts and spooky things. And hopefully here in California, it'll be nice and semi chilly and the whole place won't burn down. Hopefully soon here. But with that said, I'm feeling feisty, a little spicy today, and I want to talk about something that really grinds my gears, something that I think people need to hear, and something that just absolutely drives me nuts. (sighs) Listen, I've worked at a gym for like a third of my life, and I watch people come and go, and it's this very large percentage of people who come on a very regular basis and their bodies never change and their mindset never changes and I'm sure their blood pressure never changes and their health hardly changes and you might be thinking Naomi how could that be it's a gym with the fitness comes the health well here's the thing with the fitness people do the fitness how they do everything in life and quite frankly how you do a squat is how you do everything. Have you ever heard that saying, how you do one thing is how you do everything? This is completely true. There are some people who don't care to correct their form. There are some people who are told and they think that they already know even when something is wrong. There are some people who nitpick their form to death. There are some people who just only go part of the way down and they think that that counts. There's so many different variations of this and I truly, truly believe that how you do one thing is how you do almost everything. And as a self-defined overdoer of sorts, that's not right either. If you're overcorrecting and being meticulous over something that you shouldn't be, that's just as bad. But we're not talking about those people today. Today, we're talking about the people whose standards they have for themselves are so utterly low, it's just how they live, and they don't even realize it. This irks me because I watch these people come to the gym, and they live the same life, and quite frankly, they're just just perpetuating a pattern, and it's it's... I hate it. It's sad to me. To me, it's something that needs to be fixed. And to them, it's how they live their life. When you send your class out on a run as a fitness instructor, there's a few people who inherently will not run because of injury, because of mental state, whatever that is. Those people who don't go on the run, that's fine. There should be no guilt about not going on the run. You can have an injury. You can have something wrong. You cannot feel like running that day that's fine. You showed up. But, big ass but, all puns intended, like, if you're the person that always takes the easy way out in class, guess what? You're the person who always takes the easy way out in life. If you never go on the run and you've been coming to the gym for six years, you, it, It doesn't, it's not even like, I don't want to use the word shameful, but like, you don't even think twice. Like, I don't do the run. Yeah, we know, Karen. Why don't you do the run? Oh, well, I, uh, 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 you don't want to do the run. You don't want it to be hard. You don't want anything difficult to happen to you. So you're just going to coast your way through. And then, when you get prescribed a weight, you're going to go 5, 10 pounds under that weight, which is a solid 30% decrease at minimum. 
And then you're going to drag your butt during the entire workout. And then you're going to leave. And then you're going to rinse and repeat that over and over and over and over again. And then you're going to turn to your friend and you're going to say, it's really weird. I haven't lost any weight. My body isn't changing and my BP is still high. Let's be honest. People are going to say, I'm still fat. That's what they're going to say. But it's a lot deeper than that. Yeah, of course you're still fat. You're, you're doing this. You're spinning your wheels in the mud. You're not doing anything. I know. I told you I was spicy today. Sorry, this is offensive to some people, I'm sure. But you probably need to hear it. Go on the run. Do the thing. Make it hard. If it's not hard, it's not working. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a glutton for punishment. There's literal truth behind that. If it's not challenging you, it truly is not changing you. That is how muscle tissue works. That's how your anaerobic system works. That's how your aerobic system works. If it's not challenging anything, the body is never going to adapt to induce change. It's that freaking simple. The same goes for everything in your life. Why don't you have the job that you want? I guarantee you didn't put in the effort. And don't get me wrong, there are, nothing in life is fair, okay? People like to say like everything needs to be fair. Nothing in life is fair. Some people have to work harder to get things. That's very true. I have no pity for you because each person has a different area of their life that they have to work hard to achieve something. And if you're the lucky son of a gun who doesn't have to work hard, bravo those people very rarely exist if at all if it's really hard for you to lose weight assess and if you're working really hard the problem might be that you're not actually working as hard as you think you are try to see if you have an objective view record what you're doing be as objective as you can because chances are you're not being objective you're looking at what you're doing through feeling you're saying i feel like i work really hard and i should have results Make sure you look at it, you put on the right pants, and you say, do I know that I've done the things? Can I make it like a math problem? I worked out, I burned X amount of calories, I consumed X amount, my BMR is this, da 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 That's not perfect, but it's going to give you a sample size. Some Everybody's body is not the same. If you have an autoimmune condition like me, you could be working your butt off and it's completely working against you. That's a real thing. That happens. It's harder for some people to lose weight. That I will not lie to you. It's harder for some people to gain muscle. That's not a lie either. It's harder for some people to make money. It's harder for some people to do lots of things. It's harder for some people to be nice. Everyone has an area in life in which that they struggle and, they, and no one should have pity in those areas. If anything, you pick that person up and you teach them how to do it. You don't pity them and say, oh, I'm so sorry. Pity doesn't get anybody anywhere. And Hitting yourself sure as shit doesn't get you anywhere. I cannot stand the people who feel sorry for themselves. Because what are they doing? They feel sorry for themselves. I'm using the gym as an example, but this happens everywhere in life. Everywhere I can think of. People don't want to put in the effort and the work because it's hard. It's hard. I'm not saying it's hard or it's easy. It's it's hard. Things in life that are worth having are hard hard it's hard to raise really good like upstanding citizens for children it's hard work you can't just sit them in the corner and be like yep well mm, let's cross our fingers and pray no you have to put in effort and work that's simple people well it's not simple but people understand that fitness is also simple this is a simple thing if you always take the easy way be honest with yourself. Are you the person that gets on the bike instead of goes on the run? And then after you get on the bike, you kind of lower your weight and then you go really slow. There's no motivation there. You have to. And I think that this happens to people when they don't have a very clear, concise why. Why are you doing what you're doing? It's one of the very first questions I ask every single client I've ever had. What's your goal? Why is that your goal? If their goal is, I want to look like a Victoria's Secret model, I go, okay, why? 
They never have a good reason because that's not the real why. It's not. I want to look like a Victoria's Secret model, sub-level. I want to garnish love through admiration, through how I look. Go down another level. I don't feel like I'm worthy because I don't like the way that I look. Go down a level. Do you see how that's not the truth? Do you see how people need to get very, very, very clear on their why? When you know why you're doing something, everything, it's like the Red Sea opens up. Everything in front of you is crystal clear. And you might not even know it's crystal clear, but you will get there if you have a why in mind. A very deep, true to you why. That's why amazing, life-changing things happen when people have nothing. Because their why is deep and it's rooted deep within them. If you come to the gym and your goal and your why is, I just want to look good, you're not going to last, darling. You won't. You're going to be gone. There's no way. There's multiple things that keep you coming back and you should put some fail safes in in the way to help you like a good community around you helps you when your when your motivation is not intrinsic but you're if you're the way to get intrinsic motivation is to find a very clear definitive why in a very clear defined goal once you have a goal then you get a why then you visit the goal again and you take the goal and you break it down into time chunks so that they're attainable smaller goals this keeps you motivated over time you get rewards over time and it becomes achievable instead of if you weigh 200 pounds and you say i want to weigh 150 great by when uh the end of the year okay is that feasible we have three months probably not that safe that feasible for the long run it can be done but i doubt you'll sustain it do you still want that yes or no Oh no, I'd like it to be sustainable. Sweet, can we stretch that out to a six month, maybe an eight month goal? Sure, that means we're gonna lose X amount of weight over X amount of time. That'll bring us to May, 2021. Do you see what how detailed planning out a goal has to be? You don't have to stick to the plan, but you need to trick your brain into thinking that it's a very achievable goal and you need to break it down so that it is one. So that way you can take one step at a time and the days that you don't feel like doing it, you remember your why because it's deep and intrinsic that should be tied to your goal. And then you have the fail safes, the things that are proactive instead of reactive that are in the way that force you to do the things that you don't want to do, that force you to do the uncomfortable things. You know that saying, like you are the company you keep, like you are your, I don't know the number, like nine eight five six like you you're you're your inner circle so if you keep people around you who aren't motivating who don't want to do things that are difficult who aren't happy guess what that's gonna be you you don't want to be the big fish in the little pond you want to be the small fish in your friend circle we can't all be the small fish so pick your circle wisely pick people around you who say hey I'm going to the gym. Are you coming today? And you should return them that favor because on the days that you don't want to go, you're going to go because now there's some social pressure and there's a little bit of extrinsic drive for you. There's many ways to do this. If you have a really strong gym community, I touched on this on the gym anxiety episode. If you have a really strong community around you, you don't even need someone to like pulse into your life and and try to rip you out and say like let's go to the gym like you'll want to be there because you'll want to be around the community that is powerful and it's impactful and people don't give it enough credit so you make it to the gym you have all the things in your way once you're there once you're there you have to work okay no one's gonna hand it to you i love it some days some people listen this happens to the best of us we get to the gym we don't want to do anything you get you go out on the run you drag your butt the entire run you don't have a good workout it's basically like you wasted time i would argue you're not wasting time because you still did the thing to create the pattern which is show up to the gym but you have to work more times than you don't and you have to do the things that are uncomfortable to induce change in your body or you're going to stay the same you're going to stay the same because you're not doing anything 
to change your body. You're not doing a dang thing. You're showing up and you're hoping and praying with your fingers crossed that that's going to be good enough. And at the very beginning of any fitness journey or probably almost anything new, any journey in life, that will be good enough. There comes a day and a time where that is no longer good enough. And you have to start to climb the hill. Being subpar does not cut it. That's why not everybody looks like Adonis. Only the people who are genetically inclined and willing to sacrifice and hurt because it's that important to them in that realm of life. I hope that that is not you because it's not that important. It's important to be healthy and I hope you dedicate enough hurt and time and effort to be healthy and feel good and look so you feel confident in your own skin. All of that is very important. These journeys have to be done This could be argued for your mental health journey as well. You can hire a therapist and show up every week for 20 years, but if you don't put in the work when you're there, nothing is going to happen. I would even argue, especially even if you only do the work when you're there in your therapist's office, the second you leave, if you don't do a dang thing about it and you don't say, what's my homework? What do I do? What do I read? Help help me or try to think about it. You will never change. The therapist doesn't fix you. You fix you, if we want to call it fixing. Just like the personal trainer doesn't make you muscular or make you toned or fit. You do that. We are nothing but tools to help you. If you don't use the tool, you're going to fail at your goal. And you're going to give up. Why do people give up at at, a diet? Something like 50% of people will fail a diet in the first year and then the other of those next 50 percent an additional like almost all of them essentially will end up exactly where they started it's because they aren't invested enough and they don't realize what it takes to get something done if you want something done and you want a goal you have to show up every single day You have to be consistent and relentless and you can't let it die when the flames are gone and there's nothing but embers left for your towards your goal and it feels impossible. You have to stoke the fire and go again. You do. And it's finding the gumption to do so that's so difficult that is a skill that most people do not possess. And I call it a skill for a reason. It is a skill. There's some people where this is innate and they're very talented at it, but you can learn. So if you're sitting on your couch and you're pouting and you've been going to the gym and you're still exactly where you are and you're not happy with your body and you're not happy with your job, you're not happy with your marriage, you're not happy with your relationship, you're not happy with how your kids speak to you, guess what, Sally? That's on you. You get to take responsibility for that because it's your life and nobody's going to do it for you, not one single person. It honestly breaks my heart to watch these people. They come to the gym. They drag their ass the entire time. And then they leave. And then they show up again and again and again. And they're exerting a lot of energy and emotional energy. Of course they're drained. Of course they feel defeated. Of course they feel exhausted. Of course it feels impossible. They're not being effective in what they're doing. Look at any place you are in your life. If you're not happy with it, write down or assess what you're doing to get to a different place. Do you even have a goal? What are the tools or the things that you have in, the, in place to change what's going on? And then, are you using the tools effectively? Are you even actually trying? Probably not. Probably not. Listen, there's a time and a season in life to wallow, roll around and eat candy and just let yourself be a human and be gentle with yourself 100%. You can't do that forever. You need to have gumption to get up, intrinsic drive, and and change it. You have to. No one's going to do it for you. You're responsible for your life and exactly where you are. I'm a very firm believer in that. You can't just repeat patterns over and over and over and over and over again and expect for something different to happen. People do this all the time. 
oh, well, I've been going to the same job for the past 40 years. It's really weird that I'm really unhappy and I hate everything about it. Why is that weird, Jerry? You hate your job. You've always hated your job from the second you started. Now you just hate it even more and you're going to go to bed and wake up and do it tomorrow. I get it. Certain people value security. Security is very important. But there is always a, there's always, if you think of life like chess, there's a move there. There's always a move. Look for it. Be inventive. Be creative. Be resourceful. And find it. Find the emotion that's tugging on you. Identify it. Find a why. And change your freaking life. I'm so sick. And honestly, like, I'd rather you just, if you're going to go to the gym and waste your time, like, just don't come. It's like to that point. If you're going to have a job that you don't like and do that for 20 years, don't complain about it because you're not doing anything to change it. It's so important that you feel in control of your life. And so many people do not. It's your life. You control it. Do the dang thing. Do you understand how important it is that you own your life and you take responsibility for exactly where you are? Sometimes we're lucky. Sometimes we're unlucky. But you have to get specific. You have to work hard. And you have to try. Nothing in life is given. This is why we don't just give out participation awards. And when we do... It just degrades participating and winning. Everyone knows that it's cheap and for free. You don't want a participation award life. That's not what you want for yourself. So change your life. It's very doable. People have very hard circumstances. There's people who are homeless. There's people who are addicted to drugs and they have to get that out of the way first. There's all kinds of obstacles in life. The majority of people listening to this are not those people. You are privileged. You are lucky. If someone sends you on a run, ask yourself, can I physically not do it or do I not want to? Okay? It's it's that freaking simple. It's such a small fraction of your day. Just do it. Just go and do it. Be effective with your strategies. Make sure they make sense. Be objective in everything that you're assessing when you're trying to get to a goal because you can feel one way and be completely running in the wrong direction. I feel like I'm working really hard, quote, quote, at the gym, but then when someone objectively looks at me, I'm not. Of course you feel drained and unmotivated. You feel like you're trying. You're not. That sucks to hear. That sucks to know. But it starts there so that you can start to induce change. Get real with yourself and and don't feel sorry for yourself. There's nothing to feel sorry for. You have the ability and the power to change your life, to control your body and change your body, to change your mind, to change anything that you so wish if you wish it hard enough. So I encourage you today to do that. Go, assess your life, find where you suck find where you fail, find where you think and feel you are trying so hard and see if that's the truth. I hope, I hope that you take this knowledge and you actually use it on multiple days of your life more than you don't because you need to know that you can change your body. You just have to put in the work. You can change your job. You just have to put in the work. You can change your marriage. You just have to put in the work. Nothing in life is free. There's a saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch. That saying is true. If you've never heard of it, think about it for a moment. Really think about it. There's no such thing as a free lunch. There isn't. Something always comes from somewhere. Wishing you a beautiful today. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Bye-bye. If you don't already, follow us on the YouTubes. Follow us on your favorite Spotify, podcast, iTunes, whatever makes you happy. Wherever you listen to your podcast, we'll be there. Follow us on there. Leave a review. It really helps the pod. I'm wishing you guys the very best. I appreciate your love and support. We'll catch you next time.